Good evening, everyone. My name is Hillary Rodham Clinton, and this is The Graham Norton Show. <laughs> She doesn't chat to just anybody, does she? No. Oh. Well, uh, you know what I mean. But hey, it's not just Hillary. We've got a packed show for you tonight. Later, we'll be meeting star of Jurassic Park and the new Thor movie, Jeff Goldblum, will be here. Yeah. Uh, Scottish action hero, Jared Butler, will be here. Yeah. Top comedian, Jack Whitehall, is on the show. And with the music from jazz singer, Gregory Porter. One of the most famous names in global politics. She's been a first lady, a senator, a secretary of state, and last year she ran as the first female presidential nominee for a major U.S. party. Here to tell us what happened, please welcome Hillary Rodham Clinton. So happy to be here, Graham. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your patience and understanding. It's lovely to have you here. We're delighted to see you. Um, now, okay. So, literally, what happened? All right. More what happened? Right. Another what happened? So, <laughs> I was, I was, literally running down flights of stairs in my hotel, and I had a cup of coffee in my hand. Mm, not a smart idea. And my heel caught on the stair. And so I jerked this way with the coffee still in my hand and fell backwards, thankfully not forwards. Yes. And I have a fractured toe. Oh. Yeah, N nothing worse than that. Yeah. I, can, I, I can tell you I've had excellent, excellent medical care by your English medical system. Thank you all very, <laughs> very much. Well. And yeah. I have one of these big boots on. No, it's a very, can I just say, we don't all get such a nice, clean, space-age boot. It's really. <laughs> Often it's just newspaper and string. Yes. Don't you, I don't know, yeah. But it's proven to be a lifesaver because I can walk around. Em, do you feel jinxed? I mean, bad, <laughs> I, <laughs> bad <laughs> things happen to you. Yeah, well, you know, as I was running down the stairs, somebody yelled, give him the boot, but I didn't expect <laughs> It does seem sometimes like just the world is a ginyu. Uh -huh. You know, like so 2008, sad. it was your turn, yes, and then along well, came Barack Obama. Well, he did a great job. Then it was your turn, and Bernie Sanders came along. Then it was your turn, Trump came along. I mean, it is like the universe is working against you. Well, I just think it shows that um, some of us are able to overcome obstacles from the universe, and that's part of life, and part of my book is about... Uh, resilience, because everybody gets knocked down in life. You may not lose a presidential campaign in the United States, but uh, <laughs> but there Phew. will be disappointments, <laughs> there will be losses, and as my late mother just drilled into me, it's not at all about getting knocked down. That's inevitable. It's about getting back up. And so here I am, back up with Literally. my foot in a boot. <laughs> You're here with your book. Yes. Uh, what happened? Tells the story of uh, last year's election. And first of all, can I just say, I was slightly worried I might find it a little dry. <laughs> and, and, you know, a bit... Drink more wine. Yeah, a bit, a bit <laughs> fat heavy. <laughs> I couldn't drink more, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't know, you, well, how hard was that to get the balance right? Because there's enough in there for the political nerds, but then for a general reader like me, it's a really engaging, warm thank human you. story. Oh, Grant, thank you. Because I wanted to be both personal and political because it was a personal and political journey that I was writing about. And I really decided to do it uh, partly to answer that question. You know, I feel like I have, so the title doesn't have a question mark on it, but. I wanted to know what happened. It was such a surprise. It was so shocking. And obviously, 
devastating and all kinds of uh, consequences from that. So I dove into it and uh, I came out of it with a really strong sense of catharsis. Uh, I write in the book about how I got through those first weeks and months, you know, walks in the woods, uh, playing with my dog, spending time with my friends, yoga, my share of Chardonnay. I mean, it was, yeah. it, was, it was a combination of tools and experiences that helped me uh, get back on uh, my feet. But to go from every day, every right. minute of every day being sort of answered for, mm -hmm. to suddenly have days, what was that like? Oh, well, you know, after I gave the concession speech and, and really there were so many of my friends and supporters there and they were all crying and so I was comforting them because they were equally distraught. And I got a few phone calls um, from people uh, during that period. And then finally it was over and I walked out to the car with my husband and we got into the back seat. And it was just like somebody pulled the drain. I mean, all of the energy, all of the adrenaline, which I'd been running on for months because uh, you don't get enough sleep and it's you know, really a constant uh, marathon. Um, so I, I just you know, really collapsed. I just thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. And I felt so terrible. I really felt responsible for uh, the loss. But I got home and, you know, put on some, you know, sweatpants and a fleece and yeah. kind of just wandered around. And then the next day, uh, my husband and I went for a walk in the woods and we were, you know, moving along with our dogs. And I turned a corner and there was a young, young woman there and she had her baby in a backpack and she had her dog. And she saw me and she just cried out and asked if she could give me a hug and she did. And so she was so upset. And that's been my experience nearly every day since that I've been in public yeah. is that so many people, predominantly women, but not exclusively, uh, have been just so upset for all kinds of reasons. Well, it was interesting, that photograph of you with the, the woman in the woods, Yeah. Um, it went viral. I think part of the reason it went viral was because we were so happy to see you smiling, oh, that you weren't, you. you know, caked to mascara, hugging yeah. a jug of wine. <laughs> Rocking. <laughs> and, and this went viral. But then apparently the woods in upstate New York became like looking for Bigfoot. They yes. were all up there. Yes, yes. We, would, we would show up and there would be people waiting. You know, that's one of the things that Bill and I love to do or go for these walks. And, you know, occasionally there'd be photographers. So we kept moving from nature reserve to nature <laughs> reserve trying to and, uh, outsmart the crowd. Here, here's a family that found all uh, the two of you. Yes. And then people weren't satisfied with that. They started to kind of. They put posted. You, they started to put you in things. Yes. So yes. here is hashtag Hillary in the wild. <laughs> this will be the Reese Winston movie. I hope so. <laughs> and then this, this is very good. This is an actual sighting of Hillary Rodham Bigfoot. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> You know, laughing is, as you are an expert at, the best cure for nearly everything. If you can get back the energy to laugh and make fun of yourself and, you know, just uh, start having a good time again. So you do the walking, the yoga, a few yes. trips to the bottle bank. Yes. You're probably feeling a bit better. <laughs> right. But then, I mean, it, it's sort of like Shakespearean. Right. You went to the inauguration. I I, and that was because you were first lady, not because you've been nominee. Right. And, and you know, I really tried to get out of going. Um, I... <laughs> You know, because I was going, not as the uh, candidate or the opponent, but as a former first lady, because the tradition is presidents and former first ladies all show up, regardless of Republican or Democrat, to show support, continuity of, of our government. So, you know, we, we thought, okay, maybe others aren't going. So, you know, we, we called... <laughs> We called the Bushes, and the elder Bushes were in the hospital, which I, I think was legitimate. And, <laughs> and so then, you know, we called the younger Bushes, and they said, yeah, we're going. We called the Carters, they said, yeah, we're going. So, you know, Bill and I looked at each other and said, well, we got to go. Oh, my gosh. I, I just, I try to describe in the book what that felt like, because I didn't know what to expect. What I wanted to have happen was despite the kind of campaign he ran, I wanted him to rise to the occasion of being our president and being the president for everybody, not just people who supported him. That didn't happen. And so we were, we were sitting there and we were listening. I was sitting next to George W. Bush and Bill was on my other side and we 
were listening to this really dark, divisive speech um, that I describe as a cry from the white nationalist gut. Um, and I was so disappointed, uh, really so, uh, so sad that it wasn't an outreach. It was a narrowing and a hammering of uh, what he had said before. And it's reported, so I put it in the book, it's reported that George W. Bush, at, as it ends, says, that was some weird shit. <laughs> And, uh, and the book has been a huge success, oh, so that, that's all good. But I have to say, not everyone has been that thrilled by the publication of the book. Mm. Uh, President Trump made a rare foray into the world of Twitter. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he, he, tweeted about your, he tweeted about your book. Uh, Crooked Hillary Clinton blames everybody and everything for herself or election. She lost the debates and lost her direction. And you had a, a very good uh, reply, I felt. Mm, yes, I did. Yes. Right. Uh, <laughs> Are you tempted to ignore his tweets? Well, you know, um, I ignore a lot of them because there are so many. Uh, you could not <laughs> respond to all of them. Um, this one in particular, I said, well, I've also written a children's book that you may find. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't your tweet here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I that was like, try this one. <laughs> Did he take you up on your offer? No, I don't know. I haven't heard back yet. <laughs> but, but I do respond when I, th I think, um, you know, what he has said is hurtful and unfair and really causing problems for people. And I sometimes, but rarely, tweet at him. So uh, we had this horrible hurricane in Puerto Rico, which is a part of the United States, and three and a half million people live there. And nothing was happening, so I did tweet at him and at the Defense Department basically to say, you know, send the Navy and send the hospital ship. And, you know, within a day or two or three, they actually did it. So but, but, that's but, what I did. But has he set the agenda by... Presumably you didn't tweet that much before. He's, he's brought the world to, to Twitter to try and explain complex things in just a few words. Well, I, I, he, he has tweeted for a while, um, but you're right that he tries to... Uh, talk about issues that are very complex. He uses it to mostly attack people, uh, insult, criticize people. The most dangerous thing he does is conduct diplomacy on Twitter. <laughs> so he is trading insults with Kim Jong-un, which is like just catnip for Kim Jong-un. He loves that. The idea that he's in a Twitter insult fest with the President of the United States. So he does things that are truly... <sighs> not only upsetting, but kind of inexplicable. Uh, and some of it just goes unanswered, and others I answer, and many, many uh, people do as well. Um, let's go back into the campaign, because it, one of the bits I really enjoyed was talking about the debates. Because normally you prep for a debate because mm -hmm. it's going to be to, to and fro with arguments. But he was playing just a different game. That's right. Here's what I say in the book, because I think it's really important. If you follow politics and you're interested, watch like a debate or a presentation or a, a rally with the sound off. And so if you watch with the sound off, you didn't pay attention to what he was saying because much of it was untrue and, and, and really just silly. Um, he, you know, he was very dominant, very, you know, very big, filling the stage, you know, gesturing and it, facial expressions. If you didn't know what he was saying, you would think, well, you know, boy, he's out there really giving it yeah. to, to her. Um, so you, you really have to understand both what you're trying to say and accomplish and how to match that. Now, the second debate was the one I really highlight in the book. Yes, because the that's, looming one. He loomed over me. There yes, he I is. Mean, <laughs> and, and it was all designed to get did into you, my did head. Did you know he was there? Yes, of course yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, I think any woman would know that somebody was <laughs> looming <laughs> I knew it, and I, um, I was debating in my head, and I, I kind of share this with the readers. Look, uh, I practice not getting flustered, not getting thrown off, being calm and composed, which I think a president should be, not impulsive and not uh, trying to dominate uh, all, every in encounter. But maybe I should have turned around and said, you're not going to intimidate me like you try to intimidate women. Back off, you creep. You know, maybe I should have said that. Um, and it's, it's a, 
it's a it's a real lesson. It's kind of a you know it's a thought lesson for women in public life or the private sector. When you find yourself in these positions where a male coworker, a boss, a client uh, is you know really pushing you, trying to dominate you, our usual response is to just hold ourselves together and not respond. Because if you're too hot, they accuse you of being angry. If you're kind of apologetic, like, please, don't do that to me, you're accused of being weak. It's really hard to get right in the sweet spot yeah. of being strong and effective uh, without uh, creating uh, additional uh, blowback. She was so angry. She was shrill. You know, those are the words meant to keep women in their place. And I'm not putting up with it anymore. I'm going to do everything I can to speak up and speak out about it. And, and I think uh, everyone who heard everyone who heard your concession speech, uh, that bit at the end was so moving because, you know, because your story should be an inspiring story to women, but I'm sure a lot of women are going to go, I'm never going to do that. Yeah, right, <laughs> so right. uh, what you said to kind of the young girls of America, yeah, though, I right. think was really lovely. Well, I have this really strong belief that the best way to get sexism out of politics is to get more women into politics. And make it clear that women come in all sizes and shapes and hairstyles and voice tenor and everything else. And so we can't just be pigeonholed. Um, but I was particularly concerned about the impact my loss would have on girls and young women. So I, I basically said, don't let anyone tell you that uh, your voice uh, is not uh, powerful and valuable. And I think you very know? sweetly, uh, the message has got through because there's kind of a very, very specific phenomenon happening at your book signings <laughs> now. Uh, and these are the little girls showing up in pantsuits. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of this, hasn't there? There has been so much of it, and that little girl in particular, <laughs> whose name I recall as Grace, has on a little fake pearl necklace, <laughs> and, and, you know, they sometimes come in Wonder Woman costumes uh, <laughs> as well, but I'm trying to send a very strong message to parents and grandparents and everyone who cares about children uh, that build confidence and the right kind of confidence in both your sons and your daughters, and when it comes to girls, you know, really help build that sense of self-esteem and the idea that she is valuable, that her voice is powerful, that she deserves to be listened to, uh, because it's got to start early if we're going to try to uh, reach uh, the kind of uh, equal rights and treatment that I think we should be aiming for. So that's my mission, and I'm going right at it. Well, you won't be going that fast, in fairness. No, but, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we, wish you, we wish you well with the healing. Um, it's been such a privilege to spend time with you. Thank, Thank you very much. Hillary Rodham Clinton, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, what a treat. Um, Hillary Clinton there. And we, in fact, recorded that earlier. And if you'd like to see more of our conversation, the full interview will be available on iPlayer from tomorrow night. All right, uh, let's meet my next guest. He's one of the country's top comics. Always a pleasure to welcome Jack Whitehall, everybody! Hey! Hello, hi. Lovely to see you. And this Scottish action hero starred in Olympus has fallen and is back saving the world in Geostorm. It's Jared Butler! and even saves the planet from aliens. Now he faces off against Thor himself. Please welcome the great Jeff Goldblum! Sit, boys. Sit. Sit, boys. Sit. Yes. Yes. Good guess. Good guess. Good guess. He's still waiting oh for a handshake. Oh, my God in heaven. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh left you hanging. <laughs> Hillary so didn't even say hello to me. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. I know you missed the Hillary. Oh. Sorry about that. I would love to have seen Hillary. Well, you can if you watch telly. <laughs> I'll watch her. I met her once. Oh, yes. I did. When, when did I... You know, we were at some... At some...
event, but it's a small, I think maybe a fundraiser, somebody's house, and, you know, sure enough, we found ourselves at a, you know, uh, eating at a buffet little thing. Yes, of course. And uh, it was just she and I. I, I, I said, geez, I... I'm so happy to meet you. I, I admire you so much. This was a while ago. Anyway, she was very nice. That's my story. What a story. <laughs> <laughs> Drive safely. That's our show. <laughs> yeah, wor work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I saved that for this, this special moment. But now the weird thing, the weird thing is, uh, poor old Hillary isn't the only accident-prone person this week. Uh, Jerry Butler, you... Yeah. Now, what did you... You fell off your motorbike, you were driven off your motorbike, you were crashed, what happened? I fell off a motorbike. I no. do not fall off motorbikes here. <laughs> no, it, it was actually about two, two weeks ago now, but um, I was in L.A. and I was on my bike, and this woman went from a, a parked position to uh, basically try and do a U-turn, and, and I went right into her, and I was didn't really have much time to slow... Yeah, thank you for the... Yeah, so yeah, I was just it, imagining for, it. For, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. London has fallen. Uh, oh, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> London has fallen. Yeah. And I, I went about... Because there was a bunch of people who just happened to be there. They were in a staff meeting looking out and people unloading a truck. So apparently I went about 30 feet through the air, did a somersault and <sighs> smacked down. And I jumped right up because I'm like, remember who you are? You've got to keep it together. And the second I jumped, I went, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew I'd done something. I actually fractured five bones in my right foot and did in both my, my knees. But I pulled the helmet off and it's like, oh, shit, it's him. <laughs> And then um, this, this guy takes me over because he banged your head and he sits me down and he's like, rubbing my head. He goes, okay, what's your name? I went, it's Jerry Butler. And this guy behind him was like, I knew it. I told you. <laughs> and he said, what, day, what day is it? I didn't know what day it was before the crash. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's been a bit of an inopportune time because I've been filming a bunch and, and, um, and, um, and on this press tour, so, like, going from crutches on to talk shows and... Like, but you look yeah. incredibly well for well, a man who's... Yeah, I'm robot. an animal, that's why. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's an animal. How, when did you do that? How long ago did you do it's that? It's about 12 days ago. That's impossible. Well, okay. And you're broke? You, you and said you're five, broke? Five fractures and, and two micro fractures. And your knuckles as well. Torn meniscus. Uh, oh, my uh, God. Sprained AC, uh, um, MCL, is it? And then... I've also this got burned right through the bone. Actually, it was I, pretty hefty. It wasn't. I pretty. split a nail playing squash the other day. You had a car crash. But you had a car crash as well. Huh? I had a car. Yeah, I did actually have a yeah, car yeah, crash yeah, about no, four or five years ago. Did you? Yeah. I didn't it was know awful. That. It was like a proper near-death experience. But the, <laughs> the worst thing was you learn so much about yourself because, I, I mean, I literally cheated death. And I remember that my DVD was out that week and I thought if I had died, I would have shifted so many more copies. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> uh, Jeff Goldman, you were here to tell us about the latest Thor movie, Thor... Ragnar Rag Ragnarok. 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 Yeah. I lost confidence then. I, I know. I was. I thought I knew how to say it, but Thor Ragnarok. 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 Yeah. Ragnarok, yeah. It's out next Tuesday, 24th of October. Yeah. Now uh, I've seen it. It's great. Um, you haven't. You can probably guess. Jeff isn't Thor. So who are you? <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm the uh, the Grand Master. That's the name of my character. Uh, I don't know if you've read the comic books. Uh, you know, over the last couple of decades. Uh, he's, in, he's been in the comic books. He was, uh, uh, came, came about shortly after the Big Bang, four billion, uh, you know, some years ago, along with his brother, played by Benicio Del Toro, in another movie, The Collector. Did you see another movie with Benicio? That's my brother. And, uh, you know, I, I'm immortal, this character, and um, I have all superpowers that you've ever imagined anybody to have, but now I run this planet called Sakaar. It's a very fun planet, and I just like to play games and uh, pit people against each other for combat and stuff. Like that. Yeah. I'm in. I'm it, it sounds like he's making it up, but that <laughs> is in the movie. <laughs> it is, that is actually it. what happened. Didn't you like that? Yeah, movie? No, yeah, I, I got really a big like kick it. out of it. And Taika Waititi, the great director, he's all over that. If you know him, he's a comic uh, treasure. Yeah, because we had Sam Neill on talking about uh, the hunt for the wilder people. He yeah. did that, and boy, and what we do in the shadows. Did you see that? Yeah. We uh, love that. improvised uh, vampire, funny vampire yeah. movie. Uh, and. Uh, the cast, you know, the cast, Sir Anthony Hopkins and uh, Chris Hemsworth, of course, is Thor. 
Uh, Tom Hiddleston is uh, brilliant. And we improvised a, a lot of it. And it feels like an experimental thing. They build into it a, 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 an extra shooting period after. So they see it, and then they rewrite it, and they put it together. It's done for an actorly beautiful creative experience. Well, let's see a clip. This is uh, you. Essentially, you've, you've captured Thor, and you're trying to figure out what to do with it. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Any contender who defeats my champion, their freedom they shall win. Fine, then point me in the direction of whoever's ass I have to kick. That's what I call contender. Direction would be would be this way, Lord. Ah, Loki. <laughs> The great Chris uh, Hemsworth, not only athletic and uh, but to comically very gifted, a very wonderful actor, and Tom Hiddleston. You know, he did Hamlet here recently. Yes, he did. Did you see it? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I like, he's fantastic. He does impressions. Oh, I saw him do an impression. Oh, he with did. Robert De Niro. Oh, yes. So. Yes. Oh, it's great. Mm. Are you? Are you two? <laughs> <laughs> what a night. <laughs> That night back then? <gasps> no, what, no, it's fine. Did you the impression of Robert De Niro to Robert De Niro? Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it scandalous or touchy or? It was, it was an odd thing to do, I felt, <laughs> personally. Oh, really? But if you enjoyed it, that's good. No, it was, very, I mean, it was a very good impression. I didn't do my Gerald Butler to Gerald Butler. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> the night is young. <laughs> when will you finish that tea? Now, uh, it's actually, this is actually wine, and I, because I knew the other guys were getting water, so I maybe just popped the wine in, in a teacup so no one knows. But I, I said like a mug. I didn't mean like a teacup and saucer. <laughs> 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 It's all just wine. Why? Oh, now I've said tea. it. I was like, that's pretty together I, of you. Oh, yeah, I should have said herbal what tea, herbal and I could have got away with it. Yes. It, mean, it is. It's mint tea. No. <laughs> but I think that makes it look like you've got a problem if you're drinking white wine out of a teacup. <laughs> like, no one must know. Yeah, but n you, normally when you go on chat shows, the host doesn't drink. And so I forget, and then you come on here, and you're like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you consume per show of that? Oh, so my... No, very little. Okay. Yeah. Very little. I All of those vases were full of white wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The beginning of I've never, got, I've never got through a case. I no. mean, never. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, Jeff, we must, we must ask, we must ask, well, I know, can I, are we allowed to say, it is, this is weird. Are we allowed to say what age you are going to be at your next birthday? Oh, yeah, and this weekend, I turn 65. Wow. <laughs> Well, what, what did you, know, there, what did you get from touching? It's, 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 it's all so tight. Sometimes you touch it and it falls apart, but that is... <laughs> because I mean, I've touch touched a lot of 65-year-old's faces and hands. It's a thing I do. It's kind of weird. And it's, is there a dreary secret, or is it just genes? Well, it's no secret. There's nothing happening here. I'm, I'm, I'm coming and going very quickly. You know, I'll be, I'll be gone very soon, I'm sure. But, you know, but I do... I do... Uh, <laughs> I do live a, uh, you know, I like to, I'm disciplined. I do my little workout, such as it is. I, I won't bother you with what that is, but you know, I, do, I do a couple of things. But I do it da daily. I get, I like to get some sleep, and, uh, and I try to eat, uh, eat uh, the right, uh, oh my God, the right way. Oh, my God, I'm going to be dead in a year. <laughs> what? I don't do any of those things, but. No. But well, you work you. out. No, you uh, You live heavy work, days. Like, but my workouts. Like, well, actually, when, when I had the bike crash, I was already wearing neoprene uh, knee pads because I had screwed my knee working out. When I work out, often it's to train to get big. Like, I just put on 30 pounds, and then you lose it, then you put on. So normally, it's a pretty staunch workout that doesn't do you many fears. It's not really about longevity. Yeah, it's okay. about, yeah. let's go, baby. Yeah. yeah. I, you get big, you I know get... exactly what you're talking about, and I always oh. have that. It's, <laughs> it's the bouncing around that I find hard. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Right, you lot can shut up. Yeah. <laughs> but the good thing is, there is good news. If you're looking at Jeff thinking, this is so wrong that he looks like this. But one part of aging has affected you. The uh, additional grooming that is required. I like to groom, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, well, do you, are you? You must be already. Oh, please, all over. Well, yes, you get... Have you, have you gotten a little, no. you know? No. No, really? Well, yeah, you're a young, you're a young, young man. But I like to take a tweezer. What do you do? I like to take a tweezer and get the yeah. odd hair out of here. Oh, no, I need a flymo. It's just, I, well, I don't want to 
to get them. I don't want to shave it. You know, that's an option. I like to get them out at the root. And I kind of, it's like weeding. It's like the, the thrill of weed, the delight of weeding. Because you get that thing and you, uh, you're clean as a whistle. Look at that. And, uh, <laughs> You get them out. It's nice if you can. I got it. I got it. So there's that, and then there's nose. The the nose issue. I have had a bit of that. I have have you? Yeah, yeah. What's your? May I ask? It's a trivial and mundane and not interesting thing. But what, may I ask you? Because I'm interested in it. It's like you would imagine I do, which is. <laughs> <laughs> You rip them out by hand. Oh, is that okay. you're too young. You don't, you don't have them, do you? don't have them. pubes yet. I <laughs> <laughs> But you don't pluck them out. You have a you have quite an odd technique, I think. No, I don't pluck them out. Nobody plucks them. You're not you're serious about that. You I don't pull them out. About Do you actually that? pull them it's out. It's horrible. That's not the What's right idea. I mean, I guess it's he does it, it when he's on his bike. And then... <laughs> <laughs> it's personal. No, I had for a second. I had somebody had given me because you can buy one of those. Yeah, I've got one of those. You do. Yeah. And, and those you, you know those things. That, well, it's meant to. It's kind of a rotary yeah. thing, and you go and you go like uh, I don't trust it. And I'm much much better. With a pair of scissors, I take a nice pair of scissors. Well, not to get too detailed, but here, I take my razor. I take my Gillette number two. This part right here, I, I, I razor that very carefully, very carefully, because you can get it very close. And then there's something going on here and all around there, and I get a scissor. And there I am. And I know just and I know just what to do. And this happens now about once a week, I'd say. Once a week. Yes, I get I get I'm uh, I'm I, I I guess I'm living, you know. I uh, <laughs> things are happening. Well it looks good on you. It looks good on I you. I did it recently, so it's it's uh, quite quite uh, good, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. beautiful man. Uh, uh, let's talk about Jerry Butler's new show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all safe. Jared is back, protecting us from, this time, the weather. Uh, <laughs> Geostorm opens banal. tonight. And this, I mean, it, it couldn't be more timely, this film, yeah. since the weather is, you know, it's quite inclement at the moment. Ophelia's just been. Who's, who's at the moment? Is it Bob? Brian. 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 Storm Brian, Hurricane My Ophelia. My brother's called Brian. He's just a straight pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it, it, no, is, it is incredibly timely, this movie. Well, that was the purpose of the movie. Was that Dean Devlin's daughter one day said to him, Dad, can't we build a machine that will stop global warming? Which gave them this idea of what if you did build something? And, 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 and of course, at the beginning of the movie, it, it, it's this kind of montage of a, a quick time version of what global warming really brought humanity and it's kind of a goosebump moment um, seeing this all happen because it's not so far away from where we really are um, but of course in the movie then I, I play a scientist who builds this this space station a system of satellites that that can control the environment and that's where the fun begins though because when that thing malfunctions um, you realize if this was to go wrong then we're all up you know basically we're in a lot of trouble yeah. But Jared's there. You're over Jared, there. <laughs> You've got a sexy, action-filled scientist. Scientist. Well, scientist. I love scientists. scientists. I love. Well, you you played loads of scientists. Yeah, I have here and there. You yeah. should have been playing this I'm role. Actually, more. they're like you know. No, no. Scientists, but like you do a bit of kicking ass as well. It's a little bit of kick ass in there. Oh, a yeah. PhD in yeah. kicking ass. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. yeah, just because you're smart, I'm, it doesn't I'm mean you're not now. cool and uh, virile. Um, <laughs> the, uh, and Dean Devlin, you say? I, yeah, you the, worked with The Dean. hell you say? Yeah, I love that man. What a delightful man he is. And speaking of his daughters, he's got a lovely family. No, I've worked with him. He's a, a, a great, great man. Was he Independence, Independence Day? Independence Day. Yeah, he was yeah. Independence Day. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Well, lovely. this one's called Geostorm. Uh, here's, a, here's a taste of what to expect. It's epic. Someone has turned the system into a weapon. They're trying to change the map of the world. Heroes, ladies and gentlemen, not just one on the couch tonight. Well, no, not two, because you've been in action here. Yeah, but uh, Jack Whitehall, you are now in a show called Bounty Hunters. It starts on Sky One on the 25th of October. And I mean, this is big. It's you and an Oscar nominee, Rosie Perez. Oscar nominee, Rosie Perez, and TV Choice Award nominee. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's an action comedy thriller. Um, I wrote it with uh, uh, my collaborator, Freddie Cyborn, and uh, it's inspired by all those 80s films that I loved, like Midnight Run and Lethal Weapon and things like that. So it's my homage to, to those types of films. We've got a very exciting This is an sort of action clip. Uh, so uh, tell us about the... Before the... we see the clip, having seen the other two clips, <laughs> you, you're going to watch this and you're going to see that we had a slightly smaller budget. <laughs> Excuses, excuses. This is a car chase. It's, it's a, a car, car chase, 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 but in a G Wiz electric car. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all we can afford. <laughs> let's, take, let's take a look. Brilliant. Excuse me. Oh. Sorry. <gasps> Sorry. Can you go faster? It doesn't go any faster. <laughs> That's very uh, funny. Uh, that is funny. Uh, but uh, you had more than one of the. What? What is that? A G Wiz? Is it called? The G Wiz. We had to have two because it only had enough battery to drive for 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we kept having to swap in the cars. <laughs> and it genuinely only does 40 miles per hour. <laughs> but I want to be an action star. Like that is like. I loved action films when I was. I would love to be, like. I love London Has Fallen, Olympus Has Fallen. And I'd love to do one of them. Do you do and another one? You then we're, we're about to I'm, make another one. It's Bobby. angels. Yeah, but you have to no. drive it more than three miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, I rate, like, post-Brexit disaster film. <laughs> no. It's called The Pound Has Fallen. <laughs> They didn't clap when I rehearsed this in front of the mirror. Um, <laughs> so it's me and you, and we played like two data analysts going around the city trying to reinstill confidence in British industry. Um, one of us is the kind of nerdy, bookish former accountant, That's you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and I'm the kind of kick down doors, ask questions later, tough um, cop. Yeah. With a slightly dodgy Scottish accent. That's me. <laughs> and you just go around oh, and that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Good if, pitch. Uh, put, yeah, if you, that's how films get made. Yeah. Either that or um, 301. <laughs> Just 300, but I'm there to lighten the mood. <laughs> I, 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 you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's all yeah. happening. It's happening. Uh, but now, uh, Jack Waddell hasn't given up stand-up. You've got a new stand-up special on Netflix. It starts streaming from next Tuesday. That sounds like an illness. It, does, it, it starts streaming next week. Like, yeah. it'll never stop streaming. <laughs> Has it stopped streaming? No. <laughs> still streaming. Still um, streaming. It, <laughs> but, no, it's called At Large, and it's At Large because this is... You know, because you kind of think stand-up shows, no matter how... You know, it's just a man on a microphone. But this is... You've got big production values. Yeah, I like putting on a show. I like bells and whistles. They say you can't glitter a turd. I prove them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it has a big musical number at the end. I try to... I, I spoke about on this show how I auditioned for... Well, I didn't audition. I was in Frozen and then got cut. Yes. Um, and, yeah, it really hurts. Let it go. I won't. <laughs> so in this show, I put some of those wrongs right, and the end of the show is me trying to recreate um, a one-man version of Frozen on the stage. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So stick around to the end. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because, you know, you're a very successful stand-up and you're working at a certain level, you think every gig will work, but you still have more difficult gigs. Where, where was the Charles and Camilla one? Was that at Buckingham Palace? Uh, it was at Kensington Palace and it was this weird um, gig that they do once a year for all the staff of Kensington Palace. And I know some other people that have done this, this show and they have a magician one year, a, a musician, a comedian. And I went and I did this, this show at Kensington Palace and it was the staff and then Charles and Camilla in the front row literally sat in thrones. <laughs> I mean, it was like the closest it could be to being the court jester. <laughs> <laughs> and I went on stage and it was, it was horrendous. I died so... And I was trying to, like, 
I remember Prince Harry was out in um, Afghanistan at the time, so I was like, uh, you know, I, I was like, um, I just want to say, you know, Prince Harry out in Afghanistan, that's, that's so brave of him, uh, a ginger in that heat. Woo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you laughed, because on the night, that went, went down like a dead corgi. <laughs> It was the worst death I've ever had. And then afterwards, the one little um, bone that he threw me is I met Charles afterwards, and he just said, you were a lot better than the contortionist that we had last year. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, amazing, to think of the year before where Charles and Camilla were sat there in their thrones as a guy climbed through a tennis <laughs> racket. <laughs> hey, don't diss contortionists. I don't. Because you're, you're, your wife, is she contortionist? My <gasps> dear wife is, yes, she was in the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> my, about my wife? You're excited about my wife? No, that's the cool thing. Yeah, yeah she's, a, she's a contortionist. Thank you. Anybody want a, a uh, lozenge? Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I'll, I'll Thank you. Yeah, I'll I'll you. Uh, she's a, she was in the uh, Olympics. You're not getting one now. After the contortionist <laughs> thing. She, she, was a, she was a rhythmic gymnast, and she was in the Olympics in, uh, in Sydney in 2000 for Canada. Oh, I there remember. she is. There that's she right. is. Yes. That's my darling. Emily, and oh, then wow. she expanded her uh, training to include um, Cirque du Soleil kind of aerial things. And she does, in fact, last year she doubled Emma Stone in La La Land. All that uh, aerial dancing outside the scene in the, uh, the planetarium, you know, that's her, uh, d you know, uh, oh, dancing wow. and twisting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But can she do a contortion? Like, can you, if you go on holidays, could she get in a suitcase? That kind of thing. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, she was a magician's assistant. Oh, what? Yes, and she, so she you packed herself away in a box. That's right, she did that. And she's quite, quite bendy. And our first, we met at the gymnasium, and I, saw, I, I started a conversation. I saw her doing uh, uh, wonderful things, and I, invited her, <laughs> and I invited her to this gig. I played jazz piano, and um, there we were. Oh, her name is Emily. I think I, 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 if you're watching Gregory Porter, I'll bet you know this uh, old standard called Emily. I sang to her, Emily, Emily, as the murmuring sound of May. And, and, I, and I said, hey, Emily, you want to come up and do contortion on our piano? We had a grand piano. She said, yeah. She came up. I said, what do we play, guys? What do we play? They said, oh, that move for Fabulous Baker Boys. Remember when uh, Michelle Pfeiffer does uh, To Make and Whoopi? But And she got up and she did this amazing routine that was the two days after we met wow. we're still very much in love six years now we have two children one two oh. and a half and one six month old wow two boys yeah how long ago was this six years we met six years we ago, met. Six years ago. Oh, yeah. Excited me. Uh, you are playing the piano for us tonight I'm so excited about that Gregory Porter <laughs> yes. Yes. Just uh, to accompany Gregor, the great Gregory Porter. Wow. Has he been on before? Yes, his voice is amazing. I love oh, his voice. Oh, no, he's a, he's, I, I worship him. He's a fantastic, fantastic uh, human being and musician. So what if you would great... like to approach that piano. I'd like very uh, much. And Jack, if you could warm up is for the uh, contortionist act. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you like, this is fake fruit. This I, is wooden fruit. Yeah, it is. Don't, don't, try, don't try anything. I can <laughs> I hope that's on camera. <laughs> 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 uh, right, this double Grammy winning jazz artist is back with a new album entitled Nat King Cole and Me. Here performing Mona Lisa, it's Gregory Porter! <laughs> Great job, Jeff. Well done, you. That was beautiful. Gregory Porter! Uh, have a seat. Sit, 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 sit. You made the right decision. That was the collaboration to have. Because I know <laughs> we spoke about me and Hillary Clinton doing Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one. That was uh, the one. That was really special. And that is the whole album, Nat King Cole and Me, and it is out next Friday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of this album, I noticed. Look, it's all, it's proper, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it a two album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first time I'm seeing that. So, okay. yeah, there's two records in there, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. You got yep. the two. Yep. Yeah. No, normally yeah. this is fake, but yeah. that is a real. That is real. That is real. Yeah. Do you want? You look like you want it, Jeff. I uh, well, I uh, I can't take the only copy, but I you know I would cherish that. He already oh. gave me backstage a, 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 a CD. Yeah, oh, really? but I'll give you that. That's, I will that's yours. 
Well, my gosh, my Emily got me a record player. I could play. I could play it on the record player. <laughs> Oh that's, that, that, that's the way I first heard Nat's music. So for me, you know, on the record player is how it should be heard. No, because, I mean, it's interesting because everybody, you know, loves Nat King Cole's voice. And th but it was, a, it, this is a very personal thing that when you were a kid, this was, he was really important to you. Yeah, I have, I have to have a personal connection to the music in order to, to get into it. So, um, yeah, Nat, uh, my mother said, uh, I, I recorded a little song on a, on a tape recorder at about six and, and uh, played it for my mother when she came home from work. She said, boy, you sound like Nat King Cole. And I didn't know what that was, what condition that was. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but, but I did, I, I, found, I found out it was a singer and then, and then went into her records and, and put on that, uh, that music and that warm, rich sound was coming to me. These beautiful lyrics, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, start all over again, smile though your heart is aching. The greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. That's uh, lessons to live by, lesson, life lessons, fatherly advice. I came to Nat's music in the absence of my father, and, uh, and so that's what, that's what drew me really, really tight into, into that music. And, that's a uh, beautiful, beautiful story. And, and to, I mean, to my on train, dear, uh, Jeff Goldblum sounded very good. Was he all right? Yeah, was no, he was cool. He, <laughs> Jeff, has his own, Jeff has his own style. And, you know, that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when you look at this hat, when you look at this hat, I have my own style. <laughs> you know? Yes, you do. That's almost a requirement of jazz. And so, uh, so that was beautifully played. And that was, that was Jeff Goldblum's style, you know? <laughs> this is my second time meeting, meeting Jeff. Can we change subject? <laughs> he, he, we met in the, in the airport. And, you know, Jeff is a, is a, you know, is a gregarious guy, you know? You know, he, 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 he kind of bum rushes me. Like, boom, and come like, like, gets this close. And it's like, I'm yeah, sorry. he was like, hey, uh, Gregory, uh, uh, be good. Yes. <laughs> oh, That's the lyrics, song. the intimacy, the, the way that you make people feel, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the conversations that you're having <laughs> with your heart, with the emotions, it's extraordinary. I, I think, I think I want to work with you. <laughs> Please say a huge thank you to my guest, Greg Reporter! <laughs> Jeff Whitehall! Jerry Butler! And of course, Kelly Robin Pinson. Join me next week with music icon Morrissey, top model Cara Delevingne, actress Claire Foy, comic genius Adam Sandler, and double Oscar winner Emma Thompson. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody!